everyone and welcome back um this is my a to c stitch with me's where i do the frosty forest series by country cottage needleworks the one you see right here is the raccoon cabin this is the first part of a nine part series i am doing all nine on a big piece of fabric because there is nine patterns in this series. Um, this is the way the patterns are supposed to go. So I have done number one and now I will do number two. But as I said the last time, uh, after number two, I will most likely go over and do number eight. And then I think maybe I will do number three, nine, seven, four, five, and six. Um, just because that is the way I like to work. Maybe I change it up a little bit and do like, after I have done eight, I do three, then nine, then four, then seven, five, and then six. I don't know. We'll see. Um, there is a lot of time between then and now, so we'll just see. Um, so it is stitched on a 32 count pearl gray Belfast linen by Swigert. Everything I need, I got through the patchwork rabbit. Um, There is there is symbol and site and so you can get like patterns of the month uh, like the name of the pattern and then name of the series and of the month. So this one is called uh, Frosty Forest of the month and uh, you can see a lot of numbers here and that is basically um, you you can order just the patterns and get all the patterns in the series but you can also add on fabric dmc specialty floss and buttons and i decided to just get it all so i have gotten everything uh, the white one i am using from a, a floss away bag because uh, I think I have previously said both two and three skeins of white. There is three skeins of white in total. So um, this skein of white is actually supposed to last for three patterns. So we'll see if it does because I think I use more than half on the first part. But there is a lot of white on the first part so who knows maybe... Maybe it will be fine. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And if I run out, I have always more white to use in my stash. Um, there is one uh, specialty floss in this one. And it's Shutter Gray Green by The Gentle Art. Uh, a nice green color that is used on some of the trees. And then I actually managed to find two bobbins in my stash that is not in my master set because I usually work from my master set. So two of the colors, two of the most used colors in all the patterns except for white is 869 and 469. And I found extra bobbins of those so I took them out and figured I will use them in this project instead of taking them from my master set because then these can always be um, with all the patterns and stuff in the project bag because I have everything in one big project bag. And this second pattern, second, second part of the series is called Snowy Deer. 
And the specialty green is in this, this, and this tree right over here. So, should we just jump into stitching? So this time we will start with some white <laughs> because I need to do the border to know where I'm going to stitch basically. It's going over on this side. I'm going to work it from the top left corner of the pattern itself. I might need to just my scroll frame here a little bit. So I will just pause and be right. All right, I'm back. So the instruction says to have two stitches in between this border and the next border. So one, two, and then the third is the one I'm going to stitch. That first pin stitch is always a little bit more difficult to do. Um, I need to move here just a tiny bit there because uh, the phone is in the way of where I stitch. So one, two, and three. Uh, I am actually going to go down one, so I do like th the opposite edge of this one. The stitch, and then I'm going to do a half pin stitch, so I get the leg in the right direction that I like, plus that I can start my stitch how I usually start the stitch. Right here. I have to say it's a little bit nerve wracking, like starting the second part when I have done the first, <laughs> because I'm so afraid to like screw up half a stitch or something like that. All right, so one, two, And I think I'm going to do what I did um, over here on this top row. I'm going to go all the way over and every five stitches, except for the first stitches, I am going to do um, Half, uh, do the full stitch before continue on doing half the half stitches 
just because it's so easy to count where you are. So this first part is actually one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. So there we have four, five, and on this sixth stitch, I am going to do the full cross and then continue on doing the half legs. Then you know what? What I just realized, I have already done these stitches. So if I go back here, I would just have to end the floss. So I am actually going to rip up what I did, and I'm going to do it uh, one stitch at a time. On this whole top row, I will just have to count like a lot <laughs> when I get to closer to the edge. Uh, but I actually think I want to do one stitch at a time. I'm usually not that big of a fan over how my X's look when doing it this way. So we'll see, I might end up ripping out these stitches also and redoing the whole thing. I think it will be fine. <laughs> that stitch actually looked like it was just a half a stitch, but it was not. Sometimes that happens with linen because um, the um, threads on the weave aren't like this exact same distance from each other um, so, so sometimes and sometimes the, the uh, thread on the weave can be thick thicker than other parts so um, her excess does not look totally symmetrical and they do not look the same um, but, but the linen is even in the count, um, because there is, I think it's 32 threads, uh, in one inch, basically. And that's, uh, that's true for the whole thing. So usually when there is a th very thin uh, thread of the weave like here, there usually, if you can see right here, not far away, a thicker um, thread of the, the weave. So um, I know a lot of people think it's scary to stitch on linen, but it's um, if you have stitched on even weave, it's not that much more difficult. You just have to get used to that some of the stitches doesn't look 100% the same. And and as long as I get my s stitches to lay nice, like gray roading or like now the floss is really behaving nicely so 
I don't need to railroad. Um, I'm not. I'm. I'm actually really liking the look that linen gives. Plus, if you look at it in another way, if you use linen and another person uses linen, maybe the same color even, um, you still will get to a little bit different project. Not because you might have done a mistake or the other one might have done a mistake, but just because the, the stitches itself are will be different from the other person's uh, linen to your linen. So, example, like this snowflake over here might have some really wide stitches right here. Uh, and this one smaller stitches. And the other person might have both look very normal or the opposite or like one is big and one is wider and one is regular or one is thinner and one is regular. So there's many possible combination and just not in the width but also the height because the linen is also different. Uh, sizes in in the threads on the linen that goes the vertical way I think that is the word vertical way this way from side to side no it's the hor horizontal way I'm sorry the horizontal way um, is also um, different thicknesses but it is even and there I know there is a big discussion over the whole thing that even weave is actually called even weave uh, because linen and Ada and Hardanger they are even <laughs> in the weave also um, like on the stitch count of the weave. Um, so. But in a way I can also understand why linen. You don't usually say even weave on linen because um, even though the weave is correctly uh, size wise if you take like if you take like out one inch of this weave it might not be even um, because of the different lengths of the floss but the whole the whole thing is even so yeah that is like out and pin stitch it. Reason I ripped that out is because uh, I didn't realize how little floss I had and I'm just even though I found that new method I can use and stuff like that um, a couple a few videos ago uh, I'm not in the mood to Play false chicken. So some days you can see me like this, where I'm doing everything to avoid floss chicken, even though I will use up a little bit more floss. And sometimes I love to play floss chicken and will do it like all the time every day. Um, 
I actually am thinking about doing something a little bit more crazy because uh, show you on the pattern this oh, right here goes it's it's the stitch right under the empty stitch here in the border um so I am thinking maybe doing this green and this white uh, simultaneously and when I'm done with this white here I might be able to jump up here and continue if not to either end and start over here or just jump over there. Uh, we'll see and do the top border while I'm doing this. Uh, I'm not sure what to call it. So yeah, I think actually I will do that. So then I'm going to use 469. In the pattern it says it's called avocado green um, you can see there is a slight variation in this one I don't know why it's a skein I bought on a store that sells DMC I think maybe it has gotten I don't know a little bit discolored in the store I'm not sure maybe it's a weakness like just there in that skein something something but for this project that will not bother me at all because it usually is used in the tree or something that is made from the tree like this part right here looks like it's made from this tree right here um, so it doesn't bother me that it has a variegation in it because it's just it's just end up being a little specialty floss right there <laughs> so And that small variegation isn't bothering me enough to not doing the loop method because it's not intended to be that way. So I'm still going to loop it and maybe it will look more like a blended floss than a variegated one. We'll see. And now that I look at this, if I take this strand over here, you can see it is actually quite a bit different in the color. Um, so Yeah, I will use this bobbin for now on this section and I might only do it for like this section, the one on the other side and like every other has this color and every other I will use um, the floss that I used on this skein just so it doesn't look too different. Um. So yeah, I most likely will do that if I can remember it. So 
three, four, they're shaking. It's it's the frame and not you guys. It would be worse if I had like connected you to the frame itself. Then you really would be shaking. And yeah. on the last one, I worked very much like a section at a time, a floss at a time. Uh, but this time around, I'm thinking I'm going to work it more simultaneously. Um, so I'm actually going to find this. White floss because there is a white stripe just over the green one here. Um, there is some like snow hanging on that thing that I can't remember the name of. It's usually like those things that is hung up in Christmas time. Like we at least have it in in the street so it's like hanging on the street and sometimes it has christmas light on them they look really really nice if i ever remember to find out what the name is i will let you know um I still have to find out what these needle things on the three three is called. So uh, don't get don't get too high hopes. And obviously, I'm suddenly turned into one stitch at a time on this banner. Um, what can I say? Don't get used to it. Most likely it, it will not last. Because I doesn't... I like the way my stitches go this way over. But I don't like the way it goes on the way back. Uh, and I have tried several different methods of doing it that way. And I still don't like how it looks. So... And the reason I'm continuing doing these white stitches is because um, there's nothing over here. There's no stitches right over there uh, connecting to these stitches. Um, but I didn't continue with the green because these white stitches was over these green stitches. And I have just found that... Um, I'm just thinking about how to explain it. Mm. The this my stitches look best if I always work on the stitches highest up first and then going down. Oh. 
And I actually think I will not be far enough over to jump over here. So I most likely will have to end this length. But that's fine because then I can divide that length in two and have like two um, loop starts. And um, I think I'm going to pin stitch down here and do the loop start and then um, I can have one loop start for the top section and one loop start for the next uh, section like this. And hopefully when I remember that in my head, I hope we get to that point <laughs> where I can do that. So I will put this just to the side of where I am stitching. And then continue on. With this green. There is like these uh, things hanging down that uses the exact, exact same color as this, as this one, but I think I will do that separately. And not now. Um, because this green color will stitch really nice up if I just continue doing it and follow this like line of the pattern. I might regret that decision later, but for now, um, I think that's the best thing to do. So. I have to say it's fun to have these, um, what am I going to call it, these fur stitches here when this pattern started. That's exciting. And I can't spoil, I am actually starting this uh, part right after I'm done with the first part. So it's the same day. But you will see it in two different days, two different Fridays. And um, I don't think it will be a very big
it will like not be a problem for you at all. For me, I found that just lately when I have finished stuff, I haven't been stitching for several days afterwards. So I was thinking that I could do one more um, episode of this video and get started on this section. And start to stitch so I'm not like trying to avoid starting this because I know myself right now and that's what I would do so Jumping from here to over here wouldn't be that long if I just half pin stitch the white where the green would go. So I actually might do that on the next section where there will be a jump. So I am going to... First off, to start for this top right here, and when I am going to stitch the pattern this way, there will be a lot of floss parked after a while so uh, it doesn't bother me i always know what stitch it is and, uh, and and where that floss belongs to because i always always park in the same spot on the stitch e even though i do my stitch differently i always park in start with parking in the bottom left corner and sometimes I do a half stitch and then so I will have done the stitch like this and I park it there in the um, bottom left bottom right corner instead um, It really doesn't bother bother me much. I know I know where the floss is supposed to be used, and it doesn't for me. It doesn't look that messy. Um, yeah, sometimes when I'm taking a picture or showing you guys on my floss tube updates, then yeah, sometimes. The floss is in the way for the stitches I have done. Um, but usually they're not because um, if I work just top down, the stitches will always hang down and there will be no stitches underneath. So this way it's it actually for me looks much neater than the first part where I had some stitches parked some stitches some floss parked uh, especially when I worked in the house so
this is really starting to look good. I like it. This stitching this way was just so relaxing right now. So I think I got quiet for a really long time there without noticing because I spaced out. Just stitched. I think I'm going to park this white one right here. Do a few more stitches up the white right here. Then do a little bit more of the green stitches. I do have to say, I do think this green one is looking very bright. It's almost like I thinking if they have, have labeled it wrong and it actually was for 70 uh, because that is a lighter green color. So who knows? I do think it looks good and this uh, section right here is the exact same on the opposite side. Um, so I am going to do that on that side at least. Um, and if any of the other patterns has this 
thing right here, I will also do them in um, this green color. So most likely I will just do this in this green color and the other stuff I will use that other bobbin. Um, All right, that was what I had for you today. So, we have a little start about, about halfway done with this. There is one more half circle over here and then we will be at the edge.